Show Miss Little Roberto Pasta Fajuli from Staten Island, New York. It's Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. How you like that? How you like them apples? But I'm going to cut you some transition lenses with Crizal Alize for your new Ray-Ban 5114 color 2034, which is the black crystal and the 54 eye size. So let's begin. Of course, Robert and I have become pretty good friends. At least I'd like to think so from this is the second pair he's getting from me and of course they come with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect them while they're being shipped from overseas so the temples don't rub together and of course you're going to get the same packaging when I ship to you but it, we, we have become pretty good friends he says don't call me pasta for Julie forget about it you can call me pasta primavera now so Mr. Primavera I'm going to cut some lenses for you I'm going to take out these demo lenses take your frame spit on it for good luck <laughs> put it into the tracing element of my edger wait 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 gotta get your number gotta get your number you are going to be secret agent 4828 which is uh, his waist size his pants size 48 waist with a 28 length <laughs> oh this was too much fun okay so i'm gonna trace this two shots to the back of the head just like that and now i hit the trace button <laughs> A little stylus is going to pop up and it's going to trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com oh he's calling me now mr roberto from staten island new york you're on the air live go ahead you can speak oh, no. <laughs> yes yeah nothing you can do about it now so i'm tracing your frame so robert went down to florida to surprise his sister and the surprise was on him she wasn't there no he's actually at disney and let me show you this picture so he sent me ah uh, come on now oop i hung up i hung up on him hope you didn't see his name <laughs> I did. but this is what i'm gonna say he sent me this picture today from disney what is that supposed to be it's just a crowded room is this the back of your head am i supposed to be able to recognize you that way so all he said in the text is this is fun i don't know what it's supposed to be but that's what he sent to me so if you can hear me which you can't call me back hang on hang on let me move the camera let me move the camera i'm gonna call the guy back hang on hang on okay now he's calling okay now you're back you're back i've, I've, I've got you i hung up on you i should have known better i'm tempted to hang up on you again no go ahead you're on the air live you can talk we can hear you now don't interrupt me i'm working no, i'm just kidding so <laughs> Uh, we just we just got off the mine train. The what train? Yeah, seven dwarf mine train. Okay, at Disney. Yeah. All right, I'm typing in your pupillary distance now. Let me put your optical center in real quick. So the last pair, talk to me live on the air, like speakerphone. When your kids were in the car, when you were looking through your lenses, did you have to look up, look down? Where'd you see best? Although you said some days it was the same. Just do what I do best. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, do what you do best. Okay, okay. I trust, I trust you. I'm in good hands. <laughs> I wish I was down in Florida holding you, caressing you gently. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're paying extra for this. So that, that costs extra. So, all right, I'm coming down here. I'm, I've never been on the air live with someone while I was cutting their lenses. The guy wakes up, he says it's 70 degrees. He puts on Facebook the view from his hotel room. It was beautiful. Of course, let's see here. Well, it's 49 degrees here in Durham, North Carolina. Let me spin the axis wheel to 95. Let me make sure everything's dialed up. So yeah, how's uh, how's Disney today? Is it costing you a fortune? Uh, yeah. yeah already has. <laughs> I can believe that. I can believe that. I don't know how anyone can afford to go to Disney anymore, especially after as much money as you spend on glasses with me. Well, this pair of glasses is going to have to be, uh, you know, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Okay, so I'm putting three dots on your lenses. I'm, then I'm, mar I'm marking your right lens now. This is pretty fun, making glasses for someone live. Now, let's do your left lens. That was at 95. We're going to do 85. Don't worry, I can pay attention. By the way, had one of my busiest days yet. Cut 38 pair of glasses today before st at the before ending my 10-hour workday and, and cutting yours at the end of my 10-hour wow. workday. And uh, wow, wow. good thing I love my job. Good thing you need these things quick, too. That's why or else I would have blown you off again. <laughs> 
So, hang on. I'm looking for a dot. I'm looking for a dot. Oh. I don't know where you're going. I can't. I can hardly hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You go ahead and have fun. I'll just. I'll just keep working while you have fun. How's that sound? Well, maybe next time we'll all go together. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm count. I'm counting on you have dinner with you in New York when I come. So. You got it. All right. I'll. 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 I'll talk to you tonight when I give you the tracking info. When I ship. Okay, we'll see. Have a great time at Disney. You come to New York, free hot dogs. <laughs> free hot dogs. Okay, we'll do. Talk to you later. Bye. Toilet paper too. Right, <laughs> Bring my own toilet paper to New York. Now what he? After eating the toilet paper, you're gonna need it. Oh, after eating a new, after eating a New York hot dog. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll see you, buddy. Okay. Hopefully you don't see his number on on the the thing there. No one call this guy. He's busy. If you did see his number. Okay, so I've got his lenses prepped. Let's come down here. We got the frame, got the seg height. Let's see. PD of 30, optical center of 16.5. These are two blocks. I need to uh, put a double sided adhesive sticker on there, of which we've got two. And I'm going to put the first one on there. Put that there. St you see how I'm sticking it? Look at that. Look at that. See how I'm sticking that on their kids today? They just don't know stickers. They got emojis. What do they know about stickers? Okay, pull that off. Of course, the little button on the back, and now it's sticking to my finger. That little button on the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job tonight, twice tonight. The first one, it's going to hold in place inside the, the arm there. We's going to get everything lined up. Now I'm talking like use guises. All right. So 30, 30, 16 and a half. We're good. Let's hit the button. The arm's going to come down, place the block onto Roberto's right lens. Now let's go ahead and block his left lens, shall we? Pull the sticker off there, put that on there like that, line everything up. Of course, uh, the everything is mirrored from the left lens. I know I missed all that. I, I got the camera back on focus. I apologize if you guys missed any of that earlier. 30.5, and then we're going to do this. We're going to do a little something like that. Double check everything. We're good. We're good like that. So this is the edger. This is what cost $40,000. I'm going to build him for a second one so I can have two of them side by side here. This pair of glasses, Robert, is going to cost you $40,000. You got that, buddy? Okay, so the actual, the where's my stylus? There it is. This actually costs $39,999. This only costs $1, but you can't work one without the other. You need this to hit that button. See, it wouldn't work if I, wait, it works. Okay. So the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. That's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away the lens material. This wheel in the center, which has that channel, that valley, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel to hold inside the bevel of the frame. Now we're going to take the right lens, put it into the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. These are polycarbonate lenses. If it was a plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that material. I do not want to polish the edges. I do not, because they're not even going to show, and I only do that in semi realness or the silhouette drill mounts. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. I only want to put one on the rear concave surface of the lens. I'm going to hit the start button. The door closes, the clamp's going to shut, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as this tracing going around. Making sure the lens is large enough and then the other other thing, measure twice, cut once, making sure double checking the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. I can move it forward, I can move it backwards, wherever it's going to fit the best. Of course, Robert, with your prescription, you're not going to need any of that stuff. So, as your lens is not even going to show, but I do cut very strong prescriptions where it does become more critical. So you see light flickering in the background that is there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index plastic and trivex cut wet you would see water splashing on it now water will splash on in the lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away that optical debris that you just saw fall off the lenses so your lenses are made out of polycarbonate poly these are the Essilor brand of lenses Essilor calls polycarbonate air wear because they feel they are as light as air. Polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. 
They're bulletproof up to 22 caliber, which is important if you're from New York, but also has both UVA and UVB protection built in. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you get permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. Now, if you notice your lens is completely flat all the way around, just like a nickel, I could take it out and it would stand up on its own. It's actually just double checking its own self to make sure it knows exactly where to place the bevel. So, you do have the Crizal anti-glare coating. Anti-glare has three features in one. The first eliminates glare, especially eliminates glare when driving at night in the rain. The street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead, fluorescent lights. Now it also uses the initials ARC, which means for anti-reflective coating. You can see that eliminates reflection, so when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. Or the big reason people get, if you take a selfie or someone else takes a picture of the flash, you don't see the flash lit up in the lens. Now, the machine that applies the Crizal anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars. It takes over 24 hours to vaporize seven different coatings onto the lens. So because of the time and the investment, they may put the premium, the hardest premium scratch coating possible on top of a Grisol lens to protect their time and your investment. So this little lever that came out with the spinning wheel on the end of it, that's something you would find at the end of a Dremel tool. That's what's applying the safety bevel. Now again, you're not going to have any edge thickness coming out of the back side of the frame towards your cheek. But if this were a strong prescription, of which I do cut every day, that would become more critical in Robert's frame. It does not. Now I'm going to open this door with my mind. You like that? You like that? I can do other things with my mind. So if you don't pay me for a pair of glasses, I'm just going to show up because I know where you live now. <laughs> but I'm coming to New York. for There's a big optical convention in New York. I'm going to come. I'm going to have him pick me up at 7 a.m. in the morning and take me to the Javits Center. So I can go and buy some more glasses and see all the distributors from all over the world. So I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs pressed down at the nose. It doesn't want to go in there, so I'm not going to force it. I'm going to take it down a tenth of a millimeter, put the lens back in, hit tap one tenth, hit retouch, and it's going to go in there. Now instead of going back to the cutting wheel, it's just going to go to the bevel wheel and it's going to take one tenth off around the circumference of the lens until it fits in there. A millimeter for all my American friends who have no clue. And of course, I can't find my PD stick now. Where did it go? Where did it go? We're going to use this one. A millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that distance off until the lens snaps in there well. I don't want to force the lens in there. It would cause the frame to stretch or to roll. If you can imagine your lens like a gutter, if it were to roll outwards, it would shorten the life of the frame and give you a terrible cosmetic look which you've got enough of right now on your own, Mr. Roberto. And so, I don't know why I'm calling you that. I just like that. Don't know, Magato, Mr. Ro Roberto. <laughs> Roberto. All of a sudden, everyone's Italian. How do you like that? Okay, so again, the bevel wheel. So, again, I'm going to make this guy pick me up at 6 a.m. in the morning when I fly into New York in the middle of April to go to Vision Expo at the Javits Center. He's going to pick me up for dinner, drive me around. What he doesn't know is we're going out for Jamaican. But I actually met this guy. I was delivering a pair of glasses right before Christmas to someone who absolutely needed them out in the country and I get stuck in the mud. I don't know if you guys remember that real big heavy rain the Midwest got that was flooding everything. Well, we got a lot of rain here too, but it didn't flood too bad. I just got stuck in the mud, so I had to call my wife. Thank you, honey, for coming to pick me up. But while I did, I was talking to him and he gave me some very good advice. Never get between a New York Italian and a slice of pizza. That is words to live by. So I'm going to tuck it in the outside corner, push down the nose. Now it snaps in. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the left lens. And we're going to press that on there firm. We're going to place that into the chuck. Thanks, Chuck. And hit the start button. Just like before the door closes, the clamp shuts. And the lens is going to be traced to make sure it's large enough to fit into the frame. Going all the way around, of course, you can see as it's measuring, tracing the shape of the lens. And of course, the old saying, measure twice, cut once. 
It's measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel. And of course, you have no edge thickness whatsoever in this frame. So since the left lens is cutting, we're going to come down here and keep working. Keep working while that guy's playing at Disney. How you like that? How you like that? So, spin the axis wheel to 95, put it in over that red dot, check the power, and I am getting plus 50, which is exactly halfway between 0 and 1, where you'd find 0.50. Now, your prescription reads 0.50 minus 1 at 95. So you need two steps of far-sided correction. And without your glasses on, everything is much too small. So that's why your lenses will magnify. That's why there's a plus sign. It goes up two steps. Now you need four steps of astigmatism correction. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. It fluctuates, it comes and goes. So, this first number makes everything the correct size. This second number, the one, is what makes sixes and eights look alike with the letters P and F. It's the fine tune knob, and we're gonna turn that knob to 95. A straight line is at the red cap at zero, 90 in the center, 180 being over here. We're gonna turn just past the 90 meridian to about 95. But let's check your astigmatism correction. And now you're at minus 50. How's that? You remember high school algebra? Yeah, don't worry, I've forgotten it too. So, you started out at plus 50, and then you backed off four steps, we're at minus 50. You went back to zero to there, and we turned that knob to 95. Now, your left eye is a little bit stronger. You need three steps of magnification, and you need five steps of astigmatism correction, and then we're going to turn that knob to 85. So, we're going to end up, let's see, plus 75, and then we're going to end up at minus 50 again. How do we keep doing that? I guess because we go one step further, and then one step back. So, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at with this? Come on now. So it's actually getting the bevel. Okay, water is kicked in to wash away any optical debris. That reminds me, I need to take a bath. So it does that for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle, which tells me in just a moment, this lever will come out with a little spinning wheel at the end of that lever to apply the safety bevel to the back surface of the lens. Now the door is going to open. I'm going to take the lens out and we're going to dry it off. Now I joke with Robert, but he's in a very somber mood. His father passed recently and he actually went down to Florida to spread his ashes. One place in New York, which is very sacred to his father, which I do not snitch. I'm not going to tell where the first place is where he spread the ashes. And the second place, you know what? I ain't telling either, but only that Robert's a very good son and he fulfilled his dad's wishes and did exactly what his dad wanted him to do. Now, if I could only do what he wanted me to do. So again, I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner, push down the nose, it snaps right in. Let's take this block off. And we're going to come down here, we're going to put it in above that red dot, spin the fine tune knob, the axis wheel to 85, put it in and measure. I need to get a stronger cord. My thing's slipping down. Getting a bag in. What am I looking for? My flashlight. You know, I've got a smaller flashlight. I just can't find it. So we're at plus 75. We start at zero, point a quarter, point 50, point 75, one, but we're not there yet. Let's back down. We're going to have one and a quarter steps of astigmatism. Minus one and a quarter, we end up at minus 50. Man, the kit is good. So we're going to take it out. Now your pupillary distance is 60. I'm going to turn the card around. Place the, where's that PD stick? I keep losing it. There it is. Place the zero against my thumb on your right lens. And when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 60. So that is made perfectly. So this is the point in every video that as I clean your lenses, I explain that Robert, I'm finally going to call you Robert. When you get these in the mail, if these are too loose or too tight, there is a chance of that. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no exception. I'll show you in just a moment that I'm part of that 80%. But 
But if, if these do need to be adjusted, just stop by your local place and just tell them. It only takes about 30 to 45 seconds to adjust a pair of glasses properly. But I'm going to get these in three-point alignment first. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. Now, again, I mentioned I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Tonight, for those keeping score at home, I am wearing the Versace 3199 in color 5118, which is the blue tortoise. All right, let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. I need a new strap. My camera's sagging. Keeps wanting to fall down like some young kid's pants. So... This is what your lenses look like clear before I've turned them dark. And Robert tells me he has sensitive eyes. So since he's a sensitive guy, I'm giving him a pink, a pink cleaning cloth. And of course, I always field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works before I mail them out to you. I don't want to send you a defective cloth. Of course, you're going to get a uh, Ray-Ban cleaning cloth from Ray-Ban. You, your frame company has given you a cleaning cloth. Your lens company from Crizal has given you a cleaning cloth. And then you're going to get the best one from me. This is a premium microfiber cleaning cloth. I will include instructions not only how to care for your lenses and frames so they will last you for years, but how to clean the cloths and your eyeglass case so they will last you for years. I also include a photo request to have your picture on the website. Robert, I've kidded you a lot, but I'm not kidding now. I'd love to have your picture on the website modeling your Ray-Ban 5114s. Color 2034, which is the black crystal in the 54i size. But this is what they look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them one time in my little transitions box here in the corner. Now, as you will see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for the lenses to turn dark. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Robert, pay attention. This is important. All transition lenses will turn dark on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun, and they're going to continue to darken every day over those two weeks until they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield has UV inhibitors, so your upholstery doesn't rot or your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun. Now, if you have a convertible or a Mustang, they will turn darker as soon as you step out of the car. Now, they're also temperature sensitive, meaning they will turn, they will actually get darker when it's 85 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone, when it's triple digits outside, you're miserable, they're miserable, everyone's miserable and doesn't like working 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. So this is the first time they have darkened. Don't worry, they're going to keep getting darker. Come on, Robert, we talked about that. Don't you remember? But if anyone has any questions, like why am I so silly, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click, click the contact me button on the website. So Robert, enjoying life down in Florida. He's got to come back to Staten Island sometime. But I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses for your Ray-Ban 5114, color 2034 in the 54i size. And hopefully everyone else will forgive me for being silly and everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.